So you are here and ready to set up your student's TD Snap account. And so this is going to be a video for TD Snap Core First, um, which is going to be different from TD Snap Motor Plan. Even though it is the same app, um, it is a different page set and a completely different system. So think of them as if they're two completely different AAC apps. So if you're setting up Core First, the first thing you're going to do is um, set up the new user and get started. And so you would name the, the account. So I'm going to use George. And you're going to want to choose needs text with symbol supports. And there are multiple different access methods, uh, meaning different ways to access the system. And so um, if you're watching this video, uh, most of the time you choose touch unless um, directed otherwise. And so this is where you get to choose the specific app. So um, Gateway and Pod are in-app purchases, so we cannot access them. But the Motor Plan page set and the Core First are ones we can access. This is a video to set up the Core First, so you'll see that it's checked. And so you have different options. The United States version is going to be um, just English by itself. There's an English Spanish bilingual version that's set up where you can literally press a button and it switches between English and Spanish and you can also do that for um, Canadian French. Um, and the cool thing about those bilingual versions is that you can um, also choose the grid size to have you know a pretty robust grid size um, but also you have mo um, multiple different options to choose from which is really nice. I'm just going to choose United States, which is English only. So this is where you get to explore the voices, which you can change once in the app. So you can listen to them by pressing on this little um, microphone right on the left-hand side. So, hello, my name is Ella. I'm so, one of the child so American English Ella. speech synthesis voices from the Acapella Group Assisted Wear Premium Voices Collection. Efficient. And so once you choose the voice, there will be a check mark that comes um, comes next to it. And so then you get to choose the grid size. And all the grid size is, is the number of buttons per page. Again, you can change this once you get into the app. It does give you some options. Um, the first time it only gives you these four options, but you can actually press show more, which will give you even more options. Um, I always suggest um, to try at least the um, six by six option or the seven by seven option, um, just because these are more robust and you can hide some buttons at first. Um, the three by four option is, is, is too um, small of options. There's not that many options. You even have a one by two, but as you can see, um, it becomes less and less robust. And I really don't recommend these. Um, talk to your OT and PT in relation to access. Um, but you always wanna make sure that they um, have access without limiting their um, access to language, which is important, extremely important. So in this case, I'm going to choose the six by six option and I'm going to click done. So now it's creating my new user. So this is what it's going to pop up as. As you saw on yours, you might get an extra page that also asks you to log in or create a login. I didn't get that because my account was already logged in, but what you can do is um, skip past that. There's an option to skip and create the account, which is linked on your um, provider setup checklist. Um, so just create the account based on usually the parent's email, and I usually use the child's um, birthday or something like that. That's easy to remember. Make sure to share that with the family. Uh, what you really wanna make sure is that you also, this doesn't have to be done while you're setting up the device, at all this can be done um, a little later but make sure that the parent um, goes into their email and accepts the account um, and that way you can actually log in so let's say you've logged in and you had to skip that section because the parent was busy when you e when you emailed them or texted them so at the top right hand corner you'll see a little pencil with a gear behind it you're going to click on that and this is every this is what we call editing version or editing mode. 
And so you'll see on the right hand side, there is a bar and this is how you hide and unhide the vocabulary. And on the bottom um, of, the, of the page, you'll see all the different options for editing. And so right now it's just a quick, small, thin line, but on the bottom um, left hand corner, of the screen, you'll see two little arrows pointing up. If you press on those, it'll bring the whole um, little bar up to make it a little bigger. And so what you want to do is go, so you'll have button, page, page set, and user. And so when you go to user, you'll see that I'm logged in um, at my Gmail, which is my personal email. I had this account before I started working here. And so what you would do is you would, this would not be logged in in this case. And so you would log in once the parent has confirmed their email. Um, you can log in with the email and the um, actual password that you used. And then this is really important because once you, um, once you go to, you'll see the user right now is George. Once you go there, I have a bunch of different users, but if you look at George is checked right now, you'll see that there's a little pencil so you can rename um, the vocabulary, but there's also a little save button. It asks you if you can back it up to a local file or back it up to my Toby Dynavox. You're gonna wanna back it up to my Tony Dynavox and click next and then that backs it up. So that's why it's really important to keep it logged in, to have a login because if they move um, to their own device or a different device or something breaks, you always have a backup, which is really nice. Um, and also, if you want to change the voice, um, it's also under user. You can change the voice, rate. Um, you can really go in here and personalize the system. So just click around. Um, you can go um, under user. There's preferences, access method, which you're not going to really change. Um, what I usually do is I go to page set, which is the middle button. It's highlighted right now in blue. Um, and so you can go through and look at the grid size. You can change that. I wouldn't make the grid size different on each page. Just stick with one of the grid sizes. You'll see that there's a different option, six by six and seven by seven right next to each other. You'll see that there's a style. So if you have um, right now the skin tone and hair color is diverse, but if you want to go in here and make it a specific skin tone, so you can make it a dark skin tone for all of them, or light skin tone or medium skin tone, whatever the skin tone of the child is. Right now it's diverse, so it's a variety of all of them. Um, you can also go into the background. Um, so the page background is one that I do like to change. So right now you'll see that the background is like this gray ash color, the, which is just the color behind the buttons. What I like to do is pure black, which kind of highlights the buttons even more, especially because they're color coded. So you can always set that up if you if your child or your family is interested in that. But this is how it's gonna look. Um, once you are done editing, you click done at the top right hand corner and it is ready to use.